for the afternoon and today we are looking at the adaptive immune response part of the immune system. So adaptive deficiencies are the result of coordination between B and T lymphocytes. It is a specific immunity and requires exposure to foreign substances. So one of the definitions we look at prior to this is an antigen. So this is any molecule that is not recognised as self. It is found in all classes of vertebrates except the jawless fish. So what are lymphocytes? Lymphocytes are the key cells that adapt to immune response and there are two main types, B cells and T cells. So B cells provide antibody mediated immunity, immunity when stimulated B cells differentiate into plasma cells that produce antibodies. T cells provide cell mediated immunity. There are four main types of T cells, cytotoxic T cell, helper T cell, regulatory T cell and memory T cell. So B lymphocytes are responsible for an antibody or humoral immune response. They are responsible for the production of antigen-specific immunoglobulins against specific invasive pathogens. Mature B cells circulate around the lymphoid system searching for the specific antigen. They are activated by the specific antigen and by helper T cells. Some differentiate into plasma cells that secrete antibodies. So antibodies are an immunoglobulin protein family and there are five types. They are the IgM, IgG, IgE, IgA and IgD and each have slightly different functions. They all have a variable region which recognises specific antigen, a constant region of an FC domain which is identical for each class and each antibody is composed of four interlinked polypeptides, two long heavy chains and two short light chains. IgM and IgG are the most abundant immunoglobulin mammals. They provide a bulk of specific immunity against bacteria and viruses in Sicilia. Ig antibodies participate in defences against multicellular parasites and allergic responses. So IgA is secreted by plasma cells in the linings of the GI, respiratory and general urinary tracts to act locally. It is also a major antibody in milk. However, the function of IgD is unclear. Activated B cells are involved in humoral immunity. This divides when divides into plasma cells and memory cells. This is then involved in a process called clonal selection. So antigen stimulated lymphocyte divides and replicates itself and the progeny of this lymphocyte all express the same receptor. Antibodies can inactivate pathogens in a process called opsonization which links pathogen to non-specific immune cells to trigger attack and this forms complexes destroyed by phagocytes and block binding sites, block binding sites and viruses. T cells provide cell mediated adaptive immune responses. There are four main types. Focus on cytotoxic and helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. So cytotoxic T cells kill virus infected cells, cancer cells and transform cells, and helper T cells produce cytokines to coordinate the immune response and help to activate B cells and cytotoxic T cells. So T cells are involved in cell mediated immunity. T cell receptors for antigens have specific regions that differ from one T cell to another. Receptors remain embedded in plasma membrane and they are not secreted immunoglobulins. They cannot combine with antigens unless complex of MHC class 1 or class 2 receptors. T cells only recognise antigen presented by MHC complexes. Class 1 is found on all body cells except erythrocytes and CD8 on cytotoxic T cells bind to class 1. In contrast, there is class 2 which is found on antigen presenting cells, macrophages, B cells and dendritic cells and CD4 on helper T cells binds to class 2. So cytotoxic T cells requires peptide presentation. Cytotoxic T cells requires class 1 MHC found in all nucleated cells. MHC1 proteins are continuously made by the cell and transported to the plasma membrane. As they travel to the membrane, they pick up small cellular proteins. If the cell is healthy and the peptides are normal, T cells are them. Virus infected and cancerous cells make unusual proteins. Fragments complex of MHC1 are, are, are then sent to the plasma membrane. The cytotoxic C T cell binds to a complex and this releases chemicals called perforins, which kill infected or cancerous cells. So microbes or other antigens are phagocytosed by dendritic cells and digested into fragments or epitopes. These epitopes are complex with MHC class 2 proteins. The epitope MHC complex is transported to the cell surface. Specific helper T cells of T cell receptor that recognize antigen binds to the complex of CD4 protein helping lints. Helper T cell activation also requires two other signals, post-stimulation and cytokines. The T cell must recognize other receptors on the antigen-presenting cell 
and the antigen presented cells secrete cytokines such as t t t tumor necrosis factor to stimulate the attached T-cell. There are three stages of activation, recognition of antigen and contest of MHC2, post-stimulation of additional receptors on the antigen presenting cell, and secretion of activating cytokines by APC. So if we put it all together, the recognition of the antigen, a cytotoxic T-cell binds to the surface of a virus-infected cell, a helper T-cell binds to an antigen presenting cell that has phagocytosis, the same type of virus. The helper T cell secretes IL2 and other cytokines that stimulate the helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells to divide. The T cell secretes proteases and perforin, which inserts into the plasma membrane of a virus infected cell and forms channels. The cell takes up water and proteases and bursts. So, stage one, the antigen is recognized in the context of MHC for T cells, so lymphocyte activation and cell proliferation occurs. And in stage three, is attacking the pathogen containing a specific antigen. So, here's we diagram, you can see how the different cells become into their respective roles. So the cytotoxic T cell with cytokines then either turns into memory T cells or cytotoxic T cells directly killing the antigen bearing cells. And for the B cells, they can either go into plasma cells to secrete antibodies or become memory B cells. Immunological memory. So there's a primary immune response and a secondary immune response. So in the primary, there's initial exposure to an antigen and antibody production is slower and lower. In the secondary, there's a subsequent exposure to the same antigen, faster or larger antibody production, and the memory cells are quickly stimulated to differentiate and multiply. And this is known as immunological memory. So I can see here in this graph, so your primary immune response goes up in the first few weeks, but after the exposure, and your secondary, it goes, the second immune response goes much faster because it's a recall in it. The primary stays about the same. So looking at active versus passive immunity, active immunity is a wide response to exposure to antigen. It is natural or acts as a vaccination immunization. And for passive immunity, this is a direct transfer of antibodies from one individual to another. It occurs naturally via placenta or breast milk. Artificially, when human patient is given IgG molecules, for example, after exposure to hepatitis. And it's short-lived because memory cells are not produced. The body distinguishes between self and non-self. The huge diversity of lymphocyte receptors also generates receptors building to, binding to itself. So two mechanisms prevent self attack. The first is clonal depletion, and then the other is clonal inactivation. So in clonal de deletion, during early development, the T cells in the thymus respond to self or dis destroy by apoptosis, programmed cell death. And in clonal act inactivation, which occurs outside the thymus, potentially self-reacting T cells become non-responsive. So look at autoimmune disease, this is where the immune system attacks body's own tissues and cells. For example, multiple sclerosis, myelin is attacked, and the rheumatoid arthritis, the joints are attacked. And type 1 diabetes is another example, insulin producing cells are destroyed. So treatment options are to treat symptoms or suppress the immune system. So in summary, the adaptive immune system is a coordinated specific response to pathogens. It is mediated by B and T lymphocytes. B cells mediate human immunity and secrete antibodies. T cells mediate cellular immunity through actions of cytotoxic and helper T cells. There are three stages of response to the recognition of the antigen. Activation and cell division of the lymphocytes that attack on the antigen. Some B and T cells become long-lived memory cells that can activate quickly if the same antigens are encountered again. And autoimmune diseases are caused by the immune system recognizing their own body tissue or cells as foreign in examples such as multiple sclerosis, which attacks myelin, rheumatoid arthritis, which attacks the joints, and insulin. Diabetes, which attacks insulin producing cells. That's the end of today's video, so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you at the next one. Thank you.